Good day, everyone. Welcome to this documentary from Geophysical Digital Magazine, Fast Times. It is our pleasure that you join us on this short tour that will teach us what is unexploded ordnance geophysics and its importance. Basically, an unexploded ordnance is a munition that was armed, fired, and remains unexploded through malfunction. The United Nations estimates that 15,000 to 25,000 people globally are killed or maimed each year from land, mines, and UXOs. UXO service, therefore, represent an important subset of electromagnetic metals. UXO surveys have a shallow depth of investigation, as UXOs are generally buried at depths up to a few meters. Well, my name is Shelley Cazares, and I'm a research scientist at a company called the Institute for Defense Analyses, or we just say IDA for short, or sometimes we just call it IDA. And I specialize in computational modeling and machine learning. I didn't actually start out in geophysics. Uh, my career began in medical devices, and so I spent a few years designing data analytics tools and machine learning algorithms for implantable cardiac devices to treat heart patients. And then in the mid-2000s, I started to become really concerned about all of the news reports I heard about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And you know, all of the reports about explosive devices killing people and maiming people, both, you know, war fighters as well as civilians. And I did a little reading and I learned that some of the same technical approaches that I was currently using at the time to find harmful arrhythmias in heart patients were also being used more or less to find military explosives buried in the ground. And so I quit my job and I moved to DC to help support the, um, the DOD, the US Department of Defense in counter explosives. And so the rest is history. UXO geophysics, um, it's been around for decades. I mean, going back to World War I, World War II, um, you know, in the early 1900s, maybe even before then. And, you know, World War II in particular, you know, that led to a lot of UXO across Europe and the rest of the world, and even here in the US. So, you know, Americans haven't fought a war on mainland U.S. soil in, you know, well over 100 years, but the U.S. still has a UXO problem. And that is due to all of the military test ranges and training camps that we have to teach and train our military service members how to arm and fire the munitions in the first place. I mean, they have to learn somehow. And so many military test ranges from the World War II era here in the mainland US, they are now choice pieces of land for you know, commercial and private development, but they are potentially contaminated with UXO. And so they have to be cleaned up you know, before they can be turned over to private civilian use. Um. Yeah, there's a bunch of different tools. I mean, there's not one specific thing that's used, um, but a lot of different geophysical methods are used. The primary one traditionally has been metal detectors or electromagnetics um, and magnetometers or magnetics. In the underwater environment, we can use sonar or acoustics as well to search for unexploded ordnance like on the seafloor. And in some cases, people use ground penetrating radar as well. And those are all used to find the bodies of the unexploded ordnance, the actual munition. And then if you wanna get detailed information, maybe at the molecular level about the explosive itself, you have to get access to it or get very close and you can use chemical methods, 
um, like mass spectroscopy or nuclear magnetic resonance. That's also possible, but generally when we're searching for these things, we're using magnetics or electromagnetic methods. So um, one of my primary, primary interests is marine geophysics, actually two different areas, uh, marine geophysics. So that's the environment that I like to work in. My background is in applications of geophysics in the marine environment and underwater environments. But I'm also very interested in unmanned systems and the application of geophysics on robotic platforms. So those are two areas that um, I'm very interested in and do a lot of active work myself in. Well, UXO geophysics is important to humanity because it's a basic human virtue really to clean up the mess you made. You know, each time a munition is fired, there is a chance, a small chance that it might be a dud you know, it might not detonate like it was intended to. And then that undetonated munition might bury in the ground, but it can still pose a risk of detonation, even years later or decades later. I, I have a Google alert set up to email me every Sunday evening about new stories on UXO that have come out in the last week. And every single week there are two or three articles, sometimes more, about normal civilians like you or me uh, going about our lives, you know, in Germany or England or Southeast Asia or Hawaii or even continental U.S. and running into a UXO. And, um, you know, this can lead to really dangerous situations, you know, because people, you know, even little kids, you know, they can, they can be harmed or killed. Um, if one of these UXO actually explodes, you know, 70, 80 years after it was fired. And that could also cause damage to the built infrastructure. So, you know, things like buildings and roads and sewer lines and electrical cable internet lines. And then it can also cause a lot of damage to the environment. You know, you think of like beautiful hundred year old trees or, you know, beautiful coral reefs in Hawaii. So it's really important for the military to clean up after itself so that none of these you know, tragic events happen. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get involved in this um, for geophysicists, but for other uh, backgrounds as well. You know, we offer a lot of jobs in uh, software design, for data processing and computing infrastructure, um, for electrical engineering and electronics for developing the technology. But there's a lot of work and a lot of positions, I see them now for um, people to apply geophysics in the field, to go out and work and collect field data, to do site characterization and clean up work themselves from entry level positions um, technicians and field operators all the way to project managers and um, you know CEOs of the companies running these places so yeah it's a it's a growing area I think um, definitely much of the technology that's been developed has been developed by various government organizations a lot of it is is leveraged or utilized from military technology. And much of the problem, in the, at least in the United States, it is um, under the, the direction of like the US Army or Air Force or Navy um, to clean up these sites. And so the explosive ordnance disposal teams and experts all have generally come through the Department of Defense in the United States, but also in, in Europe and other countries, it's usually associated with that. Um, so much of our research and development work, well, I would say all of our research and development work is funded by the government and they have a large incentive to reduce the overall cost of cleanup 
they have accountability for cleaning these things up because they were responsible ultimately for dropping munitions or firing munitions. Um, so yeah, uh, most of it comes from the government. Um, there's also consortia and non-governmental organizations. Um, we work with NGOs primarily for humanitarian um, unexploded ordnance removal. Well, you know, when when students are thinking about what kind of work they want to do, you know, what kind of industry they want to enter after getting their degrees, um, you know, I always encourage them to think about what kind of work would make them proud to talk about. You know, if you're at a cocktail party with your significant other's boss and, you know, she asks you, what do you do? Or if you're at a family reunion with your grandparents and all your little nieces and nephews listening in. What kind of problem would you be proud to say that you are spending your time and your effort to solve? So for me, I mean, I started out working in medical devices because I wanted to help people stay healthy. And I wanted to use my engineering lives to help um, doctors and nurses save lives. And it was great. But then I found that there are many other ways to keep people healthy and safe. Um, and UXO remediation is one of them. So it gives me the opportunity to keep people safe and also keep the environment safe too. And that's a great feeling. So I'd, uh, I'd recommend that students think about what kind of work would make them proud to talk about. Thank you very much everyone for your attention. I hope you have enjoyed this journey through this branch of geophysics and science. And remember that UXO Geophysics is a life-saving technology. Have a great day.